So sexuality is often a very controversial topic, especially when we're talking with teens in, in, in youth groups. So um, people are very fearful around it and um, understandings may be differing. So what are some of the myths related to sexuality? Yeah, it's a, a great question. There are lots of myths. Um, so this is not an exhaustive list, but a few of the ones that come up most often. Um, one is that by talking about sex, um, it is going to encourage sexual behavior. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of the exact opposite. What we know from research is that the more information young people have and the more conversations they have with parents and trusted adults, the better able they are to delay sexual initiation and be prepared for when that happens um, to reduce their risks of things like early pregnancy or sexually mm -hmm. transmitted infections. So when we, that myth of like, if we talk about it, then they're gonna be thinking about it. Um, I, I often will equate it to geometry. So in, <laughs> In geometry, in, in 10th grade geometry, when a student says, why do I have to learn geometry? The teacher will always say, sometime in your future, you're going to want to recarpet a bedroom and yeah. you're gonna need this information. So learn it now and you'll need it later. Um, and so we never worry about young people learning geometry right. and immediately going home <laughs> and tearing up the carpet in their bedroom and recarpeting their bedroom because now they're interested in experimenting with these formulas that they learned. Mm -hmm. But when we insert sexuality education into that geometry example, people get very worried about that. And so I think the, the fact is that young people can hear a lot of messages and they can learn things now that they will need across their lifespan. Mm. Another myth that comes up a lot is um, they just need to talk at puberty. It's, it's the talk, right? Capital T H E talk. And again, what we know from from facts and research is that it's an ongoing conversation. Mm -hmm. It's a conversation that starts early and it continues because kids and adolescents need different information across those different dimensions of sexuality um, that are really tied to developmental stages. Mm -hmm. So they may need to know the names of body parts when they're little. And as they head into adolescence, they, they want and need information about intimacy, about healthy relationships. And so parents and trusted adults like youth leaders are the people who can really convey information that's developmentally appropriate. Um, and to just, even if we don't get it right, I think one of the other myths is if I don't know, have all the answers, mm -hmm. I can't have a conversation with a young person. And the, the reality is it's okay to say, I don't know. Um, here's what has worked for me, or here's where we can find some more information information, um, but not having all the answers stops us from having conversations and then it leaves young people without any information and it leaves them to their own devices mm -hmm. to find information from other places. Sometimes literally devices. Literally. You don't want them just Googling the answers to their sexuality <laughs> questions. You want those to be centered in the faith values that your youth group is sharing and they won't be unless you're the one talking about them. Mm -hmm. So I think that leads to questions of what kind of education do we provide? Right. And we know one of the myths is with regard to the virginity pledges, that virginity pledges are the one way to do sexuality education. And the myth is that they really don't actually work. Right. The reality is that they don't actually work. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. right, right. The myth is that they do. <laughs> and if we just teach young people to just say no, and they take that pledge and they wear a bracelet or a necklace or a, a ball cap that says true love waits, um, that that's all we need to do. And the reality is, and we know again from research, that uh, virginity pledges have limited effectiveness. That for mm -hmm. some young people, especially younger teens, um, they, they work for a few years, so they can delay that sexual uh, sexual behavior initiation by 18 months or as long as two years, but they are certainly not waiting until marriage as a result of having taken a virginity pledge. And one of the things that happens is if they've only taken a virginity pledge and they've only received abstinence education, they are really unprepared mm -hmm. for how to protect themselves when they do become sexually active. So they actually are at increased risk for early pregnancy or sexually transmitted infections because they don't have the information they need to reduce that risk because they never got those messages. So I want to just be really clear that when we talk about education, it's not the word abstinence that I have a problem with at all. It's the word only. Mm -hmm. um, a values-based abstinence plus curriculum um, is very often a, a useful piece to include in youth group. It's not that we don't want to be talking about abstinence, it's that we don't want to only be talking about abstinence.